So tonight we start the uh, training for the small circulation sitting meditation. And the reason we do the small circulation is uh, both for our Tai Chi martial training and our Qigong um, training to maintain and improve health. So what does the small circulation do? If you're familiar at all with um, acupuncture, you know that there are um, pathways through the body in which the vital energy circulate, uh, vital energy that we call chi. There are um, two particularly important pathways. The uh, governing vessel, which runs from the bottom of the torso up the center of your back and over the top of your head to the um, roof of your mouth. And then the conception vessel, which runs from the uh, bottom of your mouth down the center of your torso and down in uh, to the bottom of the torso where it meets with the uh, governing vessel. These vessels are like reservoirs for chi, where chi can be stored and circulate abundantly. In addition, these two vessels um, connect to the 12 channels that provide the vital energy to the 12 organs of the body. The conception vessel connects to six yin organs and the governing vessel connects to six yang organs. So this is very important in order to maintain a smooth flow of qi bioelectricity in the main manifestation in the body through, through your, throughout your body and through uh, to your organs. As we get older, however, a natural process is that our uh, vital energy or chi diminishes as we consume it. Uh, some of us consume it faster than others, but as we age, the quantity of our chi tends to diminish unless we are careful to cultivate it and preserve it. Also, the quality of the chi circulation tends to diminish as we age. Some of that occurs because we don't move enough. We sit too much, uh, which causes a chi to stagnate. But also, as we get older, we become less flexible. And the joints stiffen up and muscles tense. And both of those phenomena restrict the flow of chi. In addition, we tend to accumulate uh, a body fat and body fat is, uh, when we talk about the circulation of bioelectricity in the body, fat is non-conductive. Fat is like an insulator. So the more the vessels, the governing and conception vessels um, have fat accumulating along their pathways, the more narrow those pathways become and the more restricted the chi flow becomes. Practice of the small circulation, however, will help to reopen those pathways and increase the flow of chi through them. In addition, 
in our preparation for the small circulation, we'll learn how to increase the amount of chi stored in our lower dantian. And that's uh, the place where uh, the chi has its residence. It's the center of the bio battery of the body. And we'll be able to increase the amount of chi we have available to circulate. So the pathway of the governing and conception vessel, very important to maintaining our health and combating premature aging. And by learning and practicing the small circulation, when we take action to keep that pathway open and to help um, increase the flow in those pathways. Questions so far? All right. One of the things we need to do in training for the small circulation is to become comfortable with having the tip of the tongue lightly touching the roof of the mouth in the place where the roof of your mouth is most ticklish or sensitive. This is called creating the tongue column or in a more strange uh, formulation building the magpie bridge. That comes from ancient times. So uh, I'm not sure why it's the magpie bridge but placing the tongue that way, doing the tongue propping or the tongue column creates a better connection between the governing and conception vessels. That's why we uh, should be doing that actually anytime we're doing Tai Chi or Qigong to strengthen that connection. Yes, we have a connection even when the tongue is not placed at the top of the, at the roof of the mouth, but by placing the tongue there, we get a better connection, becomes stronger. We also need to become comfortable with sitting cross-legged. In order to keep the chi that we're circulating within the path of the circuit of the governing and conception vessels. If we don't cross the legs, the chi can stray down into the legs. And we'll lose um, some of the uh, chi that we want to keep in the governing and conception vessel circuit. And this uh, sitting uh, meditation, small circulation, dates from ancient times. In ancient times, the training path was different than what we most of us do today. In ancient times, because the practitioners were so disciplined, they would spend months, maybe even years building up the quantity of chi in their lower dantian before they would start to circulate the chi. This meant that once they began to circulate, if the chi strayed from the correct path, it could cause serious problems. So one of the things that could happen if the chi went down the legs and you, you had built up a very large quantity of chi before you started circulating and chi go down your legs, it can overload the nerves, causing temporary paralysis. And as we'll learn as we go through the course, there are several um, acupuncture points on the governing vessel that also are dangerous 
if we had a large quantity of G and allowed that G to stray from those points um, and depart from the governing vessel path. Now this danger is much less today because um, most of us aren't going to spend and haven't spent months or years building up the quantity of chi in the lower dantia. So what we're circulating is a lesser quantity of chi that isn't as dangerous as the larger quantities that people cultivated in ancient times. Nevertheless, we don't want the chi to stray from the path because at the very least, it means we lose some of the benefit because we lose uh, some quantity of chi going astray. Um, so Dr. Young created the training path that we're going to use in this class that I use in all my instruction, which is step-by-step -step gradually working the uh, pathways and this is much safer than the ancient way of doing it. And um, neither he nor I have uh, been aware of any problems that this has caused for any of our students who've used this path. So that's good news. The bad news is that because we haven't built up a large quantity of chi before we start to circulate, it may be very difficult for you to feel the chi circulating. And thus, you may think, nothing's happening. <laughs> so, uh, some people are more sensitive to chi than others. So some of you may say, oh yeah, I feel something happening. And others may say, what? <laughs> so you have to be patient and continue with the practice, even though it feels like maybe you're not really circulating chi, you can't feel it. But eventually you will. Um, do we have any questions on what I just talked about? No, okay. So that covers the why and a little bit of the what. Um, the when, when to do this. Well, you know, the traditional training program is rigorous. So they would say three times a day, probably for an hour each time. In the modern age, not many of us are going to do that. Um, but of course, the more you practice, the more of the better results you'll get. So once a day, it's probably like the minimum for um, uh, I don't want to say fast results, but timely results. Um, and the time of day, well, the half hour before sunrise is really a great time. Um, if you're out in nature, which we wouldn't be today, <laughs> and uh, when the uh, foliage, the foliage is in bloom, because the trees ionize the atmosphere a half hour before sunrise. So outside a half hour before sunrise is an ideal time. <laughs> early afternoon, <coughs> um, about two o'clock, not too soon after eating lunch is another good time. Sunset is a good time. And uh, midnight also a good time, but that means you're staying up probably longer than you should. And my view on the best time is when it fits your schedule. So the important thing is to do it 
and secondary, secondarily is like when you do it, at what time of day do you do it? So we'll follow the training path step by step and uh, we'll um, take you through the complete small circulation um, by the time uh, we reach the end of the spring semester. That would be the first week of May, by the way. And I think that covers, oh, um, of course, the uh, what you learned in the introduction to meditation is important to remember uh, natural fabric clothing is good because you're circulating your bioelectricity um, right underneath your garments. And if your garments generate static electricity, then you can have a bit of uh, who knows what kind of interplay between the static electricity of the artificial fabric and your bioelectricity. Important to remain erect, um, but not stiff. The head upright and the gaze level, even though we'll be doing this largely with eyes closed, but you don't want to let the head droop down because what happens if you let your head droop down? Well, here's the conception vessel, right? So it becomes kinked. And the governing vessel now that goes up the center of your neck here, it becomes tight because the back of your neck is stretched tight that's going to inhibit the chi flow. Not to mention the fact that if you look, if your head is like this, how can your spirit be high? And if your spirit is not high, how can your chi flow be strong? So it's very important, even with eyes closed, to keep the gaze level. You can sit on the floor, and of course, if you sit on the floor, you need something under your buttocks to keep you from feeling like you're tempted to roll backwards. Um, or you can sit on a chair. Now, Dr. Young meditates on a recliner chair. He doesn't recline it, he keeps it upright. Uh, but yeah, he sits on a chair like this, only his chair is leather. So it's natural fabric where mine is, uh, I'm not sure what. So, uh, and I think that covers it for the re necessary review of the basics. Training path looks like this. We need to become comfortable with reverse abdominal breathing. Because, as I've been explaining in the small circulation, we have intention to move our chi strongly. And reverse breathing is the most effective uh, when we want to move our chi strongly. Also, kind of a new element to the training path. Once we're comfortable with reverse breathing, we can add Ming Men breathing, uh, which enhances our ability to store Qi in the lower Dantian. And we'll be explaining this as uh, we go along. And we'll also then when we're comfortable with the reverse breathing when we add the Ming Men, Ming Men breathing, it becomes embryonic breathing. So reverse breathing, uh, as you recall, you're moving your abdomen and the front forward and backward and a perineum up and down. And Ming Men breathing is when your abdomen expands, your Ming Men goes back. When your abdomen contracts, your Ming Men 
comes in. It doesn't move a lot, but it, you, you should definitely feel some movement eventually of the main vent area. So that means much easier to feel the center of your lower dantian, which is the midway point between Ming Men and front of the abdomen. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, learn uh, how to more train uh, focusing the mind in the center of the lower dantian. And as we do with the embryonic breathing, we'll be building up the quantity of chi in the lower dantian. I'll explain how this happens when we get to that stage of the training. After we build up the quantity of chi, and again, we're not gonna spend uh, two years doing this, uh, but we're going to move on to the steps of beginning the chi circulation. Um, and there's about, uh, I'm going to say, six or seven steps that will take um, piece by piece to eventually get the energy circulating, using the mind to lead the chi through the path of the governing and conception vessels. Okay. And I'll be uh, showing you the different stages in the circulation and the different points where we, um, that we need to focus on as we do the circulation. As we progress through the class, we'll be spending less time on instruction and more time on meditation practice. And as we spend more time on meditation practice, I'll begin to work into the end of the class the recovery after meditation. So if we're meditating for longer than 30 minutes, recovery becomes more important uh, to uh, wake up the body and restore chi circulation in the other parts of the body besides the small circulation. So we'll be adding recovery after meditation um, as we progress through the training. In the beginning, we'll divide the class roughly two equal halves, first half instruction, second half practice. But as we progress, the instructional half will diminish, the practice half will expand. All right. Questions? So we'll start, um, I think I've covered all the basics that we need for right now. Some of you have had the class before. And so when we practice, just work on whatever uh, phase of the training you're comfortable with. And beginners, of course, should uh, just follow my instruction, uh, starting in their practice with um, the uh, effort to become comfortable with reverse breathing. Uh, to add the Ming Men breathing to create embryonic breathing, and then to what we call light the fire, which is to build up the chi in the lower Dantian. So as we begin practice, I'm going to cross my legs. I'm not doing full lotus, so that's not necessary to do full lotus which is a good thing because I don't think I can do full of this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to place my uh, hands in the lap right here with the thumbs touching like this. This is called firming the center. So I want my mind to be 
in the center of the lower abdomen. And having the hands here in the lap like this helps to keep the mind there. If the mind wanders away, don't become upset. Just bring it back and resume your practice. So first task is to practice the reverse abdominal breathing and become comfortable with that process to gain control over the muscles involved in the breathing and to make the breathing long, slow, deep and even and relaxed. And reverse breathing, we inhale through the nose. Now you can exhale through the nose or exhale through the mouth, whatever is comfortable for you. And some people say, how can I exhale through the mouth when my tongue is at the roof of the mouth? I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. So uh, practice, I suppose. So place the tip of your tongue at the roof of your mouth and the place where the roof of your mouth is most ticklish or sensitive. As we inhale, we gently pull in the lower abdomen and gently lift the perineum or pelvic floor. Now the perineum is controlled by the same muscles that control the anus. And as we exhale, we gently push out on the lower abdomen and gently push down on the perineum. In the beginning of reverse abdominal breathing training, we keep the movements small and we confine them to the lower abdomen as we become comfortable with the process, we can gradually enlarge the size of the movements. But we want to be careful to avoid creating tension in this area right here, right below the solar plexus and uh, right below the diaphragm. So start down here in the beginning and you can gradually enlarge the size of the movements. So we inhale, abdomen in, perineum up. Exhale, abdomen out, perineum gently down. Place your mind in the center of your lower abdomen on a level about two inches below your navel. If you're already comfortable with reverse breathing, then try adding Ming Men breathing. And you may already be doing it. So Ming Men breathing, as you inhale, your front of your abdomen comes in and you also bring the Ming Men in a little bit. Okay, and as you exhale, front of the abdomen goes out and the Ming Men goes back. Of course, the perineum is still moving, just like you did in reverse breathing. So if you can become comfortable with Ming Men breathing, then you have achieved embryonic breathing. Embryonic breathing should enable you to more precisely locate the center of your lower abdomen. on a level about two inches below your navel. And once you become comfortable with the reverse breathing and 
the embryonic breathing, then work on focusing your mind on finding as precisely as you can the exact center of the lower Dantian. And if you can hold your mind in that center, you'll be able to begin the process of lighting the fire. So the process of lighting the fire, you're building up the quantity of chi stored in your lower dantian. Where's that chi coming from? Well, all of us, no matter how slender we might be, have six layers of muscle, fat, and fascia in the front of our abdomen. As we move the muscles in the front of the lower abdomen, doing the breathing, the reverse breathing, the embryonic breathing, we create friction. Friction creates heat, which converts the fat stored there in the lower abdomen, front of the lower abdomen. Fat is processed food essence. Converts the fat into chi. And since we know that the chi goes where the mind leads it, If you can hold your mind in the center of your lower Dantian, the chi will flow there. And be stored. Over time, this process of lighting the fire will increase the quantity of chi stored in your lower dantian, it'll also increase the ability of your lower dantian to store chi. In other words, this bio battery is going to gain capacity as you practice. The more chi you lead to it, the more it will become accustomed to storing larger quantities of chi. As you engage in the process of lighting the fire, you may feel your abdomen becoming warm. And that's totally normal sensation. You may feel your muscles begin to twitch. Now, why would the muscles twitch? Well, because you're building up the quantity of chi, bioelectricity, in the lower abdomen, and the nerves there may twitch because they're not accustomed to this larger quantity of chi that you're producing here. Eventually they will become more accustomed and it will take more chi to make them twitch. So again, it's a normal phenomenon indicating the success of your efforts at lighting the fire. 
So we'll leave the instruction there for this evening. And we'll go ahead and practice. At whatever stage you're comfortable with, whether it's the practicing the reverse breathing, adding the Ming Men breathing to create embryonic breathing, whether it's lighting the fire, or actually I should say before lighting the fire, using your embryonic breathing to help you refine your sense of the center of the lower Dantian. When you have that sense of the center, putting your mind there and lighting the fire. And if you've already accomplished that from previous training, then you of course can practice whatever stage of the circulation that you're comfortable with. 